Over the last 20 years, there has been a long debate about how to deal with immigration. And immigration is a very touchy subject in America because it turns out when you advertise that your country is the motherfucking best and the earth itself is made out of milk and honey, it, it kind of makes people want to like come in a whole lot. Just, just, they just kind of want to be here all the time to see what the, what the hoopla is about, right? See if any of the advertising is true. And look, a, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on what to do and how to deal with the immigration crisis. At first, there was a committee of eight Congress people that was formed, you know, people from both sides of the aisle came together, Democrats, Republicans, they came together like the Avengers to try to solve this complex problem. But then it just turned out to be like Zack Snyder's Justice League. You know, it's just dark and long and didn't really have an actual vision and everybody's chin was CGI'd for some reason. But in 2009, under the Obama administration, uh, he put forth the Immigration Customs Enforcement. That's right, immigration cops, because that's what you need when you have an administrative problem, right? That's, that's what you need when you have an issue that can be solved with legislation and paperwork. It's like if Rambo was trying to open a bank account, but then when they asked him for his signature, he killed everyone and then wrote his name in blood on the safe. Yeah, logical and also very cool. Super cool. But Immigration Custom Enforcement, nicknamed ICE, because you got to be a real cold son of a bitch to want to separate families. And that's exactly what ICE has done, right? Uh, in cities all across America, Obama not only deported the most amount of immigrants as a president with the forceful use of ICE, but he also built the detention centers for these undocumented immigrants. And he did this while wearing, you know, a, a nice debonair smile and a tan suit and spoke about granting amnesty to immigrants. I mean, he's saying one thing and then he did another, right? It's like watching a Nicolas Cage movie. It's confusing, but you can't stop watching and you're unsure whether what you're watching is actually good. It's, it's very confusing, Nick Cage. And look, a lot of times these immigrants would get stuck in these detainment centers for years for small crimes. Interesting that immigrants get detained for years over misdemeanors, but a banker doesn't go to prison or see, even see the inside of a jail cell for an hour after completely completely destroying the economy and creating a collapse. Now, over the years, we've seen the brutality of ICE in the immigrant communities, separating families, all in the name of protecting America from, well, you know, like a, like a couple taco trucks and, and maybe like a Subway franchise or like a hotel chains. Whew. That, thank God they were, because that could have gotten really, really bad, you guys, okay? I, I mean, Americans would have, would have had flavor in their food and like a decent place to stay and sleep while traveling. God, that's not the America I want to live. Ugh, ugh. Now, recently, we also saw ICE and the Department of Homeland Security offering classes to just regular people to teach them how to spot undocumented immigrants and basically do their jobs, in turn creating an ICE militia. But before that happened, uh, the Trump administration sent out border tactical patrol teams into Portland to use the same tactics that they use against border activists and suspected undocumented immigrants to kidnap any activists they think are associated with the Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, the idea was that BTAC, and, which is the border patrol agency that they use, BTAC was so good at unwarranted profiling of people that those racist skills could be very effective in the name of fascism. And this was, of course, revealed by the Blue Leaks, which was published on DDoS earlier this year and was reported on by The Intercept. And even before all of that, 
ICE and DHS prosecuted Scott Warren of the immigration activist group No More Death for the very devious crime of, you know, giving water to immigrants that were crossing the Ajo Desert. And sure, yes, that sounds like a very delicious salsa, but it is one of the harshest stretches of deserts around, uh, and any, like around the world even. And look, they had to arrest Warren, right? Because this guy was giving American water to Mexican humans who were then going to consume that water in their Mexican stomachs duty free. I mean, that's basically like an inter, it, that's it, it, like international aquatic warfare or but at least that's what ICE and DHS think it was. But by attacking a group literally called No More Deaths, it's like ICE and DHS are advocating and saying, we want all of the death. That's for us. I guess it's good to have goals, right? Now, I wish I could say that that's the worst thing happening with ICE, but recently there was a whistleblower out of a Georgia private ICE detention center who found out that there was a doctor performing unnecessary and non-consensual hysterectomies on various women. Don Wooten, the nurse who, was, uh, who blew the whistle at the Sal prison in Georgia said, many women came forward to her and said that a particular doctor has been performing hysterectomies without prior warning. In one of the cases, a woman uh, was given a, a they, they removed her fallopian tubes while she was in the middle of an operation. She definitely could not have consented to that and then told her about it later. I mean, this news is abhorrent. This is one of the worst things that, that, that we've heard in our generation, but it is a part of a long line of sterilization experiments that have taken part in America. Back in the 70s, black women were used as practice for medical students and would receive C-sections and could accidentally become sterile, right? America has been practicing unwanted sterilization on people of color for decades now. So ICE is just championing that proud tradition of violating human rights, which is just about as American as apple pie being jammed down your gullet whether you want, to, want it or not. Now, there are a bunch of Congress people that have come out and said that they're going to investigate this matter. But ICE and DHS say that there's no possible way that this could have happened. And, and those women had to have received some kind of notice about what was going to be done to them. That's crazy, right? I mean, of course, and we have to believe the upstanding people at ICE and DHS, it's, it's, it's not like they have a long standing history of like violating human rights by ensuring people die in a desert or, or separating families or detaining children or attacking people's first amendment rights. Oh, yeah, wait, yeah, the whole, yeah. Look, if you didn't understand why I said, oh wait, right there, just go ahead and rewind this to the beginning and just, and just start, and I think you'll get it or at least I hope you'll get it. And if you don't get it, I really think there might be something wrong with, with your cognitive skills. Like you, you might have some sort of cognitive issues or you're Joe Biden. Look, if you're confused about why people are against organizations like ICE, I think this whole podcast should make it very clear, right? I mean, this, this is a very inhumane way of addressing a problem that can be solved with forms and math. Immigration reform is not a solution you can police away. Immigration reform is going to have to come from amnesty and self-reflection. But considering that both corporate parties have an anti-mirror policy, I don't really see the self-reflection happening anytime soon. This recent violation of human rights is part of a compendium of ways that ICE and DHS have clubbed the First and Fourth Amendment to death. There is no justifying their actions. There is no coy political way of arguing people's death and illegal detention and human rights violations. And look, if you try, then, I mean, you're basically like a toady for fascism. We don't need immigration customs enforcement. So with everything we know about this organization, I think it is beyond time 
that we abolish ICE. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching this uh, on, the, on the video on the YouTube channel, you might see a couple of cool, interesting changes. Uh, for, for, for example, we have a green screen with a, with a, with a background. Uh, that's, that's new, that's awesome, that's, inter uh, that's amazing. And that's because uh, this is being recorded at the Rivers Edge Studio, part of the Rivers Edge Radio Network. Uh, I'm very excited to be recording and uh, filming and uh, doing all my podcasts and live virtual stand-up comedy shows right here from the Rivers Edge Studio. Uh, and if you wanna check out more things from the Rivers Edge, you can check them out on the TuneIn app. Just look for the Rivers Edge playlist and you get 24 hour streams of local Pittsburgh area music uh, it is an independent radio station that promotes independent musicians, so go check them out. We are very excited to be a part of the Rivers Edge Studio, which is in the river, part of the Rivers Edge Radio Network. Uh, but as I mentioned, I have live virtual stand-up comedy shows coming up. These are shows done via Zoom that will be recorded right here in the studio. Uh, it is a, a multi-platform a uh, comedy show with graphics and videos and uh, comedic social commentary. Each week, it's brand new material. I talk about a new topic every single week. And all you have to do is grab your tickets, you get a confirmation code from me, and then one hour before the show, I send you all of the login information via email, and then you log in, you sit back, relax, and have a good time. These happen three Fridays out of every single month, three Fridays out of every single month at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. If you want tickets to these shows, they are available right now on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. While you're on my website, not only can you get tickets to these shows, but you can download my latest stand-up comedy album and check out all of my other stand-up comedy albums as well. Uh, I released a new one in June of 2020, June of this year, and it's called Politely Angry. You can stream it, you can download it, you can listen to it wherever you like listening to uh, music and comedy. But the best way to support independent artists is by going on Bandcamp, which you can do directly off my website as well. Uh, Bandcamp gives the most back to the artist. And right now, Politely Angry is available for $1 for a singular dollar uh, off of my Bandcamp page. Uh, so once again, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com to check that out. And while you're there, not only can you check that stuff out uh, and check out past episodes of this podcast, my other podcast, uh, Forkful of Noodles, but you can also become a sustaining member. You can make monthly donations to help improve the quality and quantity of this show. Uh, and, and that's if you can. You, by no means it, do you have to. It's awesome if you can. There are people that have already become sustaining members, uh, and there are various ways you can do that. You can do that directly on my website. You can do that through the Patreon. You can do that through PayPal. You can do that through Bandcamp. And what does that get you? That gets you free tickets to the live virtual stand-up comedy shows. It gets you early access to the longer full episodes of Forkful of Noodles, uh, which, are, which are basically what gets recorded from the Citizen Revolution shows and then becomes episodes of Forkful of Noodles. And you get unreleased stand-up comedy material. So you get all these awesome things by becoming a sustaining member. Of course, only if you can. Everything starts at about two bucks a month, but you can also make a custom donation as well. So once again, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -A -H -A. You can get tickets to my shows. You can download my album. You can check out more videos and content from me. You can sign up to my email list or you can, and or you can become a sustaining member, which is all very cool. Uh, and I appreciate everybody that listens to this podcast that comes back and checks out the new episodes uh, had, that has already become sustaining members that follows me on, on the YouTube, Facebook, Rockfin, that shares my content. You guys are amazing. You guys are incredible. Uh, and if you are new to the channel, uh, I hope you consider becoming a subscriber. I hope you consider becoming a returning, uh, returning listener to the podcast. Uh, so thank you guys so much.